Hello, welcome to California in Focus. I'm Eliana Kernodal, Assistant General Manager for America's Talking Network, and I'm standing in for David Mastio. Joining me today is the Center Square's California reporter, Kenneth Shrupp. Kenneth, how are you? I'm doing well today. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for joining us. So you and David have talked on the show before about estimates from the California Legislative Analyst Office and the revenue shortfalls California is facing in the 2023-2024 fiscal year, as well as some projections about the coming years. And in response to this, Governor Gavin Newsom initiated a budget freeze. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, of course. For the 2022-2023 fiscal year, the Legislative Analyst Office has estimated that we will be experiencing a $26 billion revenue shortfall due to a recession in the state that started in March of 2023. This revenue shortfall is going to compound in the coming years to produce a $68 billion budget deficit for the 2024-2025 fiscal year that is currently being planned for and legislated. He did initiate a budget freeze, which means that departments have to significantly limit any new spending. This means things as small as like ordering more printer cartridges before you run out will not be allowed. Um, you can't buy new IT equipment or vehicles or travel outside of you know time sensitive or critical need. The only exemptions for this are declared emergencies, avoiding significant revenue loss and achieving significant cost savings. Agency secretaries and cabinet level directors who do make use of any of these exemptions have to report these as well as all of the cost savings they achieve on a monthly basis. How long would this budget freeze be in place for? This budget freeze is going to be in place for the rest of the 2023-2024 fiscal year. And it is likely going to result in major decreases in state spending in the next year. Now, California Senate Republicans are saying this is not enough. What further steps are they calling for? Uh, in addition to the freeze, they're trying to make reductions in spending for the rest of the year where we can set aside some more of the money to meet the deficit that we do have for this year, which I believe is $32 billion. Given that the state has about $24 billion in cash reserves, this means that for the coming year, we will need to continue to make major cuts. Are these revenue shortfalls coming as a surprise to the state officials? Um, what what has led California to this place? I think we would have known that this is happening six months earlier if there hadn't been the extension in IRS tax filing by about six months due to the winter storms that we had last year. But that really isn't the fundamental cause of these problems. California has one of the most volatile tax bases in the entire country because it's mostly reliant on taxes paid on income by the top 1% of earners and on IPOs from capital gains taxes. Without the tech boom, with interest rates, what they are, people don't want to sell their property, which means that the state isn't capitalizing on, on the gains from people's appreciation and property values. The state is facing a major loss in revenue. California has always gone through these boom-bust cycles because it can't have uh, consistent increases in the property tax base due to the passage of Prop 13 in the 1970s. One thing that people will sometimes mention is the role of out migration on tax revenue. And, and you've talked about this before and how California actually has one of the highest rates of out migration in recent years. But at least for me, sometimes it's hard to conceptualize those numbers and percentages, especially in a state with such a large population. But the American Redistricting Project put this in the context of congressional seats what are they predicting with the latest census numbers? Earlier this week, the census released its latest data set on population migration between states. And what they found is California is likely to lose four congressional seats after the 2030 census is completed. That is the highest of any state in the country and demonstrates some significant loss in relative population. For reference, Texas is positioned to gain four, Florida to gain three, and uh, the state of New York to lose three. So you talked to Thad Kauser, a 
professor of political science at UC San Diego. And he explained some of the impacts this could have on California from an economic financial perspective. What did he have to say? Right. Uh, Kauser is an expert in state and national politics. And what he says is that if these population trends do continue and California does lose congressional seats, this means it's going to be harder to bring in more federal dollars to the state. But at the same time, population losses are going to drive a decrease in need for total federal funding and services. So on a per capita basis, that might not have a huge impact. However, it does. he did note that with California's decrease in national stature, that it could drive greater cooperation among its remaining delegation to receive those fewer tax dollars. Well, this is a, a very interesting story, and it'll be interesting to see how California figures out its revenue going forward. And I'm sure you'll continue to report on that. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Kenneth Shrupp, this is Eliana Kernodal. Please subscribe and thanks for listening. Knowledge is power, and you deserve to know what happens in your state government. That's why the nonprofit Franklin News Foundation is bringing you straight news journalism through the center square, reporting on state authorities and publishing stories that show where your money goes and who spends it. By supporting the center square, you can track politicians' use of taxpayer money and demand transparency from elected officials. This is how we can equip everyday Americans to hold their government accountable. Become a supporter of Franklin today at franklinnews.org donate.